Hey everyone, welcome back to the Generative AI Learning Series by Star Agile. In this series, we'll continue to explore Generative AI and how it's changing the way we work and create. If you're curious about AI or eager to learn more, you are in the right place. I'm Josefa and I'll be your guide throughout this journey. In this third chapter, we are going to explore vector embeddings and vector stores. If you have missed out on any of our previous videos, don't worry, here is the link for you to check them out. So let's get started. So in this session, we are going to be discussing the concept of vector embeddings and vector stores. These concepts are going to be the building blocks for the further sessions on retrieval augmented generation or racks. In this session, we are going to understand how we can convert text into machine understandable format known as numbers, right? So machines cannot understand text, they require numbers to perform the operations. So here we'll break down how we can convert text into numbers and store them inside vector stores. To begin with, we know that machines work on numbers. They work on binary values 0 and 1. So how do you convert these text into numbers? The answer to this lies in the concept of embeddings. So in order to understand these words, take a simple two-dimensional graph for example. So on this graph, what embeddings do? The embeddings convert these text into numbers such that text with similar meanings are placed closer to each other. So let's begin by talking about what are embeddings. Embeddings are vector representation of text on a n-dimensional plane. So let's break it down and understand this concept with a simple two-dimensional graph. So consider this two-dimensional axis. Here we have x and y axis. And what embeddings essentially do, they take a piece of text and represent the meaning of those texts into a vector. So here we have two-dimensional plane. So let's take a few sentences for example. So first sentence is let's say I love pizza. Right? That is the first sentence, let's say, and the second sentence is, I want to have a pizza. So what the vectors will do, so embeddings are going to convert this piece of text into a two-dimensional vector, right? These two two-dimensional vectors will be such that when you plot it, they are going to be closer to each other because they are conveying a similar meaning. In both the sentences, we are actually talking about pizzas and we are expressing the way that we want to have pizza. So what the embeddings will do, these embeddings are going to be looking like a set of vectors for x and y coordinates. So let's take for example here, the x coordinate comes out to be 0 0.99 and the y coordinate comes out to be 1.2. For the second sentence, the x coordinate comes out to be 0.81 and the y coordinate comes out to be 1.5. How these are embeddings are generated, that's not the uh, agenda for this session. But the idea here is to take a piece of text and convert it into its vector representation. So when you plot it, what you will find is that these two vectors of sentence 1 and the vectors of sentence 2, yeah, the vectors of sentence 1 and sentence 2 are going to be very much closer to each other. On the contrary, let's say we have a third sentence which says, I want to learn machine learning. So this sentence is conceptually very different from the previous two sentences. So the corresponding embedding of this particular word will be farther away from these two words. Or the conceptual embedding of the third sentence, which is I want to learn machine learning, will be farther away from the meaning of the first two sentences. Right? So remember, the first two sentences were talking about the affection towards pizza, whereas the third sentence is talking about the need for learning machine learning. So here these two sentences are conveying one set of meaning, whereas the third sentence is conveying a totally different set of meaning. So therefore, on the embedding dimensionality plane, there the embedding of this third sentence will be farther away from the embeddings of the first two sentences. Right? So therefore, words with similar text will have similar vectors or their vectors will be much more closer to each other. Now you might be wondering why do we need to create embeddings in such a way in the first place. The reason being that when you have created the embeddings, so imagine that next up what we will do is we will take those embeddings and we will store them inside a vector store. So a vector store is nothing but a database that can contain all of your embeddings. So consider this table right now as a demonstration of these vector stores. So within this vector store, what will happen? It will basically contain all the text that you have provided. So here we'll have text and their corresponding embeddings. 
right? So we had the first text about love for pizza and the embedding for the first text. Where the second text about you want to eat a pizza and the embedding for that. Where the third sentence about I want to learn machine learning and the corresponding embedding for that. So once you have stored all these embeddings inside a vector store, now let's say a third person comes up and they want to retrieve all the similar pieces of text towards a certain query. So what they want to do is, let's say they have a third sentence, right? How about a pizza? Right, so let's say this is a new query that they have given and what they want to do is, they want to retrieve all the text that are similar to this particular sentence from your vector store. So what you can do is, you can similarly convert this new query into its own vector, right? So whatever the new vector will be and I will take this new vector and run a similarity search to retrieve all the similar vectors from our vector store. So the vectors that we have created, they allow us to calculate similarity. With similarity, we will understand which vectors are closer and which vectors are farther away from each other. And once the similarity search is done, the end result we will basically get the list of vectors which are most similar to each other or in other words, we will get the sentences or the text from the original vector store which are similar to the original query which we have provided. Now this concept is the building block of retrieval augmented generation. How it is used in RAG that we will cover in the next module. So let's see this in action and understand how to convert text chunk it, store it and retrieve it. So now let's get started with the hands-on. In this, we'll practice how we can actually create our embeddings, store them and retrieve based upon a certain user query. So let's begin by importing our dependencies first. So we'll first import our OS module. Next up, we are going to import our document loader. So here we'll say from langchain underscore community dot text load. Uh, we will say from Langchain community got document loaders, we will import our text loader. Next up, we are going to import our splitters as well. I will explain the concept of splitters in just a second. So here we will say from Langchain underscore text splitters, import recursive character splitter. We will also import our Langchain dot hugging face, when we will import our hugging face embedding. Finally, we will import our vector store as well. So I'll say from Langchain community dot vector stores import FAISS. Sorry, that's a just text spell mistake. Yeah. So let me explain what each one of these classes are going to help us do. So first of all, the text loader class that we have loaded will allow us to load the document that we want to embed in our vector store. Right? So the document for which we want to create embeddings, that document has to be loaded within our Python environment first and then we will be able to store it within the database. So here we are going to load the document which is in text format, right? so it is a simple text file. So therefore I have imported my text loader. Depending upon your requirement, you have other loaders as well. So if you want to load documents from HTML files, from PDF files, etc. Then you can use the corresponding loader function or the loader class to load that document into your vector database. So for our demonstration, we are using a text file. That's why we have imported the class called text loader. After that, you can see we need to split our document into text. This particular next function, which is recursive character text splitter, this will allow my this will allow me to split my document into chunks. So a lot of times what can happen is that a document that you are trying to embed can be too huge to be created into a single vector. Right? The, the size of that document can become too big to handle in one shot. So therefore, using the splitter functions, we can actually split our document into sub documents, smaller chunks, right? and then use individual chunks to embed it into our vector store. I will demonstrate this functionality in detail in a minute. The fourth one is our hugging face embedding class. So this class allows us to embed a chunk of text into its corresponding vector representation. We are using hugging face embedding because OpenAI embeddings require us to pay a subscription. So for, for the purpose of the demonstration, we are using classes that are free for anybody to use. So therefore, hugging face embeddings are open source. You can use them easily for any machine. And finally, the vector store that we are going to use for storing our embedding is FAISS, which is a vector store created by Facebook that allows you to store and retrieve files in a much faster way. Right? So FAISS stands for Facebook AI Similarity Search which is a document vector store that allows, uh, that allows you to retrieve the documents fairly easily. 
So let's begin by loading our document first. So we'll define our loader here, which is basically a text loader that is going to load the document file that is stored in my system. Let me show you what document we are trying to embed. So this document is a simple document that contains a company's policy. Here we are writing a piece of text that says that all employees are entitled to 20 days of paid vacation annually. The work hours from, are from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Remote work is allowed for two days a week and the health insurance is provided to all the full-time staff. Right? So we have created a simple text document that contains a few of the company policies. And the idea here is to basically embed the text present inside our document. And then let's say a user comes in and the user wants to answer a few questions depending upon, let's say, they say, how many paid vacations do I have? And our goal here would be to take that query and search which is the best suited text from our database that can answer the question that the user has posted. So we'll take this document and embed it inside our vector store here. So you can see here the first thing that we need to do is first we need to load our document. So therefore you will see here that I'm creating my text loader class. And then finally, I load the documents by calling my load function. So here, next up, after my loader has been created, I'm calling the load function to load all the document that is, or to load all the text which is present inside my document. So if I print the docs here, you will see this particular document will mention the source and it will also mention the content that is part of this particular document, right? So this is essentially all the content that we want to embed inside our vector stores. After that, we want to create our splitter. So in this particular case, now what we will do is we will take this document and break it down into smaller chunks. Now there are two reasons for doing it. The first reason is so that sometimes if the document is extremely big, now we can break it down into smaller manageable chunks and then embed each chunk separately. And the second reason is that since this document is containing text, right? So there is a lot of text inside this document and we want to pinpoint the exact answer. So what we will do is we'll break it down into smaller chunks with some overlap so that the model can effectively search and retrieve the chunk with the highest overlap, right? So here we will, let's say first piece of text could be all employees are entitled to 20 days. The second text could be employees are entitled to 20 days of paid vacation and so on and so forth. So we are going to break it down into smaller chunks, which has some overlap with the previous one so that we have enough pieces of sentences from our document and then we'll store each sentence individually inside our vector store. So over here, what I'm doing is, over here, I'm basically taking my documents, right? And I'm passing this document to another class, which is my recursive text character splitter. So what will happen? This particular splitter will allow me to split my document into chunk size of 50 characters. So each text will have 50 characters and there will be an overlap of 30 characters. So what does this mean? It basically means that, let's imagine that you have a piece of text, right? So which contains some N number of characters. And let's imagine that we are creating a chunk size of five characters. So what it will do, the first character which will, or the first chunk which it will retrieve will contain the first five character. And if there is some overlap, then what it will do, imagine that there is an overlap of three characters, then it will basically take the previous three characters of the last chunk and count the next five characters from there. So this will basically be the next chunk. Then after that, the next chunk will be this one. And the third, fourth chunk will be this one and so on and so forth. So it will break down your original document into chunks of five characters each with an overlap of three characters. That will basically create my chunks from my original source document. So over here, I'm defining a class that can essentially divide my source document into a chunk size of 50 with a chunk overlap of 30 characters. Now, after that, all I have to do is basically create my chunks. So for creating this chunk, for creating these chunks, I can call the splitter class and I can split the documents very easily. So here these chunks will be created. And once these chunks are ready, now I am ready to embed these chunks using my hugging face embedding model. So following this, what we need to do next is we need to define our embedding model. So here what I'm doing now is basically I'm defining a model that can create embeddings for these individual chunks that we have defined. Remember, each chunk is a piece of text which has 50 characters and an overlap of 30 characters. We can increase or decrease it. We will do that and I'll demonstrate what, how the results will vary when we are increasing or decreasing our chunks. So now what we are going is, we are, what we are doing right now is we are defining our embedding model. Here you can use this model here because this is again completely open source. We are using this model from Hugging Face to convert our, ch our chunks into embeddings. So I'll define this embedding model right here. 
So after we have defined our embedding, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create our vector, our vector store to store these embeddings. So after that, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to define my vector stores. And this vector store is basically going to take two things. The first is it is going to take my chunks that I want to embed. And the second Im input is going to be the embedding function that is going to allow it to embed each dot. So over here, the first parameter are my chunks that I have created. And the second parameter here are the embeddings that will allow it to embed these documents inside the vector store. So over here, we have created our vector store that will easily embed these chunks and will do apply this embedding to create the vector embeddings for each and every text inside our chunks. So now our vector store is ready. The second thing that we'll do is let's say we'll define a query over here. So over here, we have defined a simple query. This query is asking how many vacation days are given as per the company policy. So I'll create this query. And the second thing that we will do is now we will try to retrieve the answer for this query from the vector store that we have created. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to query my database that I have defined here and get the most matching sentence from the chunks that we have created to get the closest answer to our query that we have created. So let's create a retriever. Right, so what we will do next is we'll define a retriever that can retrieve the answers for the query that we have posted. So over here, I have defined my retriever that can take the answers from the vector DB based upon the similarity of the query that we have defined. And let's take the results out. So I'll create the object of the results class. I'll, sorry, I'll create a variable called result that can invoke the retriever and get the queries here. And once these queries are ready, I can then start printing those answers one by one. So what we are doing now is basically we are taking our retriever, invoking the retriever and getting the responses back from the vector store here. So remember, this, this retriever is created as in uh, from the vector store itself. So it knows which document it needs to perform the similarity search on. So once these invoke function runs, it is going to return me the top matching results for our vector here. And then we can iterate through each of the results that we have received and we can print the content of that document below. So what you will observe is that these are the top matching chunks out of all the available chunks that we have received, right? The first one says days of paid vacation leave annually, work hours. The second is entitled to 20 days of paid vacation leave, right? So you will see that whatever answers we are getting, those answers are similar to basically what input we have provided. Now remember, there is no AI involved here. It's, it's purely statistical in nature. It is taking this input sentence, converting it into its corresponding vector representation, and taking that vector representation and matching or finding the most similar vector out of all the individual chunks that we have stored. And what it is returning, it is returning the chunks which has the highest match with the input query that was provided. Right? And that is basically how you, you can easily create embeddings for your input documents, store them inside the vector store and use the retriever to retrieve the most matching chunks out of all the available chunks inside the vector database. So in this particular session, we have successfully created a vector DB and we have used the retriever to retrieve the most matching documents from that database. In the next session, we will now use this concept to start with the concept of retrieval augmented generation or rack. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. We've got more exciting Gen AI episodes coming your way very soon. Also, if you are looking to earn a globally recognized certification in automation testing and Gen AI, be sure to check out the Star Agile certification courses. Thanks for watching and keep learning. I'll see you in the next video.